In 1972, Urs Reimer published a research paper on polygon simplification. One year later, David Douglas and Thomas Pecker published the same results. Today we are going to talk a little about this algorithm that is known as Reimer Douglas Pecker algorithm for polygon simplification. If you want to read the original paper, here is the one by Urs Reimer. Let's suppose that we have a polygon that we want to simplify because uh, the original polygon contains just too many nodes. In the Reimer Douglas Picker simplification algorithm, we are given an epsilon parameter that corresponds to the max allowed distance from the simplified polygon to the original polygon. At the first stage, we choose the line segment that connects two nodes of the polygon the first node and the last node. Then we are going to iterate over all remaining nodes of the polygon, and for each node, we are checking what is the distance from the node to the chosen segment. We are looking for the first node whose distance exceeds the value of epsilon, which is passed externally to the algorithm as a parameter. So let's suppose it's this one. Once this node is found, we construct new segment here from the first node to the found peak node, and we also connect the peak node to the last node. And this way, we obtain two segments. At each peak node, the algorithm starts recursive iteration. One recursive call is done for the left branch, and the second recursive call is done for the right branch. Let's suppose now that in the left branch we do not have any other node, whose distance to the segment is greater than the past epsilon, if that happens when the whole segment is pushed to the result. On the right branch, the procedure continues recursively. So we again iterate over all nodes, trying to find a node whose distance exceeds the passed epsilon parameter. Let's suppose it is this peak node. For this found peak node, we construct a couple of segments once again. And the algorithm branches recursively one more time. This is the left branch. And this is the right branch. The procedure continues recursively, and at each recursion we are doing the same job. We iterate over the nodes that are spawned by a single segment, and we progressively check if the distance from those nodes exceeds the value of epsilon. We can suppose that we have another peak point here for the left branch, and another peak point here for the right branch, because the distances from those nodes probably exceed the value of epsilon. As a result, we obtain more splits. Probably another split is going to happen here. And you see that we kind of got rid of some redundancy in the original data in this zone here, and also here and here. So this is just an illustration, and of course the density and the quality of the final polygon will largely depend on the value of epsilon that you will choose. And this is the only input parameter of the algorithm. As you can see, the algorithm starts with a big segment, then it splits the segment onto two sub-segments. And this is the first level of recursion. And so it goes. So at the end, formally speaking, we obtain the binary tree of all splits. And now our job is to collect all the leaf nodes to construct the final polygon. If you check the original paper by Urs Reimer, you will see all these binary trees and some stacks that he is using in order to implement the algorithm. Fortunately, we do not need to overcomplicate this whole thing because we have recursive calls and we can just solve this binary tree business by recursion. In any modern programming language, you can put together a function named like RDP for Reimer Douglas Pecker. And what this function does, it accepts a couple of parameters like first and last, and of course it has to have access to all the nodes of the polygon. But ultimately, the core of this function will be to core recursively itself, once from the first parameter to the peak point parameter, let me call it M and the second time for the midpoint parameter to the last parameter. So this is what you would normally do to put together this Reimer-Douglas-Pecker algorithm. 
we published our implementation of the RDP algorithm in our little in-house Mebius library, which is the library for computational geometry algorithms. The algorithm itself is implemented in Geom Polygon, which is the class to represent a polyline. It can also be closed. And here we have a simplify function, and we are going to code now. When you run the Mebius executable, you see two windows. One is the console and another is 3D viewer, which is pretty basic viewer, not, nothing to be especially proud of, but still it's quite useful to debug, to visually debug things. First, I'm going to import the polygon definition from the file. And this is my circular polygon. Now I can give a command like simplify part, the part name, then the epsilon parameter, let it be like one millimeter in this case. And then I also have to specify the level of recursion. If I do not want the algorithm to stop for visual diagnostics, I'll pass here a minus one, pure technical flag. Now we see the algorithm converging, and this is the final polygon. Because the polygon is closed, when we choose the initial segment, we normally choose the same point twice. So it was like this, the generated segment initially. And then we start to check the distances from every point to our degenerated segment until we find this big point over here. So you can see from here that the same logic of choosing the initial segment can be reused for closed polygons. Although in the first iteration we obtain a degenerate segment instead of like the real straight line segment. Also we can see the final result over here. You see that the optimized number of poles is 5 instead of like 75 original poles. So this is quite a bit of simplification over here. But you can also see that the polygon that we obtain at the end is probably just two cores. This is, of course, controlled by the epsilon parameter. So let me just decrease it to 0 0.25 millimeters. Now you see that we have more splits than initially. And this is our ultimate polygon. And now let's run it without diagnostics. So you see it's pretty fast. Here is the result. Here is the reduction summary. A couple of things remains to be said about this algorithm as such. First of all, it's not optimal. It means that it doesn't minimize the number of vertices. It just gives you more compact representation of the same shape with uh, respect to the tolerance that you provide this little epsilon value. But it doesn't ensure that the number of vertices is really minimal. Then, of course, the algorithms like these do not take into account any features of the original polygon. And if you had like a perpendicular edge somewhere in your part, then it can easily cut your angles and your perpendicular and parallel lines can easily appear slanted or angled in the final result. It doesn't respect any local concavities or convexities in your polygon. Then you should also be careful about the generated polygons because if you have a very small hole over here, then as a result of simplification, you can obtain just the same node repeated twice. That is why in our code, after we finish simplification, we also check that the polygon is not degenerated. Because if it is degenerated, then we better return like a null pointer, saying that the outcome of this optimization is practically useless. And at the level of the client code, this would probably mean that the whole polygon can be ignored. In terms of computational complexity, this algorithm is pretty nice. In the worst case scenario, you will have a quadratic complexity, where n is your problem size or the number of uh, nodes in your polygon. But in practice, normally you can expect something better than quadratic complexity, and you will have here log linear complexity, which is way better. And uh, basically, if you run it on even complex polygons containing like thousands of poles, you will expect to see like just fraction of second or millisecond. Speaking about possible applications for this algorithm, you can probably think of them yourself because it's like a general purpose computational geometry method that can be used to simplify polygons for robotics, for 
cartography, for segmentation, for nesting, if you have like these curved polygons that you want to simplify before collision testing, and many other contexts. So I hope you will find it useful, take care and see you next time.